Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Live here, and pff, yeah, I've played Pikmin 4. When I say Pikmin 4, I, I don't mean the demo. I don't mean that that pitiful little thing, you know, sort of the, the four minutes of content that's in it. I'm, I'm recording this before the demos come out. I've no idea what's in it. But no, I've played the full fat thing, and I've played it for a goodly amount of time, and I'm going to tell you my thoughts about it. Woo. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. So, Pikmin 4, um, I had fun with it. But no, in all seriousness, I've played the opening area of the game, and you may sort of think, well, that doesn't sound like a lot, does it? The first level? Well, let me tell you, these levels are chuffing huge. Like, Pikmin 3 had some big old levels, it really did, but to give you some context for how big these levels are comparatively, I mean, when I first landed, I thought this doesn't look very big, and then... I just kept exploring, but um, to give you an idea, uh, you can move your base now. Just like if you find a new area, you can just say, yeah, base here now, and the game will be like, okay, yep, your base is here. Because otherwise it is a complete faff to get stuff back to your, um, back to your, well, it's not a ship. It's called the SS Beagle, and it's just like, it's like the little thing from Pikmin 2, you know, it's a, it's a little thing. It's a little thing. And in standard Pikmin Fair, you're going to be taking treasures and things back to it. And, you know, because it's got some, like, sparklinium or something in it. Some sort of special substance that can fuel spaceships. Because convenience. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a game. But why are we even on the planet? Well, the premise is that Captain Olimar was was trapped on the planet and it's, it's breaking new ground and you are a member of the rescue corps or the rescue team and I uh, should have made a note of this and you're going down to that flipping planet and uh, unfortunately um you, you, everyone gets stranded like uh, it's you you come down to land and everyone goes blah and fa falls out you know it's they, they didn't have their seat belts on or something but then you as the newest recruit you know the the rookie of the team because you're never someone that people initially respect you've got to go down and you're all right you can save these people and so you're going to be rescuing the rescue squad, team, coalition, whatever they are. The ship's damaged, as I mentioned, you need to collect treasures which have this sparkly element in them that can be used for, like, ship fuel for some reason, so that you can, you know, well, flip and escape, but also fulfill your primary purpose, which is to find Olimar. But along the way, as I say, shenanigans, you're gonna have to find other people as well. For some reason, the, the signal that's been broadcast out has been picked up by everyone and their dog, and I mean that literally. And they're all crash landing, left, right, and center. I've, I've found a florist, I've found a treasure appraiser, which is much more normal, but I've found a florist. What was he doing there? He doesn't even remember. He's just like, you, you talk to him and he's like, I fell off the jungle gym and when I woke up, I was in here. I was a little bit concerned at first, I'm not gonna lie, when I heard the initial premise that it was gonna be very straightforward. Oh no, you've got to go and rescue, but the rescue team scattered. But the fact that there's like, loads of other people for seemingly, you know, sort of reasons that I, I, I haven't worked out yet is a lot more interesting. It's like, why is everyone coming to this planet? Why is everyone crash landing? These are genuine questions that I don't have the answer to. And that's nice. You've also probably seen uh, uh, this geezer from the trailer and um, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been confirmed in the game for me yet, but I mean, come on. That's Olimar. And being a veteran of the old Pikmin series, I know that in the bad ending, um, when, when you don't actually get all of your ship parts and everything like that and Olimar is stranded, um, Ol Olimar gets, he, well, he dies. Um, <laughs> he dies and the Pikmin put him in the onion and he comes out with a sprout on his head. And I, I suspect maybe we're looking at something here, you know, because there's no helmet or anything like that. I, 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 I don't know, but it's intriguing me. He's not the only one you'll see like this. There are more people with like leafy heads and sprouts coming out of their head, none of them with their helmet, and they seem to all be obsessed 
with dandori. Dandori is a Japanese word and very loosely translated. It means sort of like organization, arrangements, you know, sort of things like that, you know, sort of plans and that sort of thing. And in the game, it's used to describe a sort of a, a state or a sort of a, a discipline of um, managing your time correctly and, you know, sort of multitasking and making sure you're being as, as efficient and clean and tidy as possible, which this office is not. And all these leafy hair sods they're all obsessed with it and you you go down into some of these underground things there's there's more underground I, I haven't even touched on the underground yet but there are some of these things you go down and you'll enter a dandori uh, thing you know and it may just be you know oh it's a little challenge like a little bit like the challenge modes from uh, pikmin 3 most notably where you have to like collect as much as you can within a very limited time limit and you know what it's really flipping fun. <laughs> but what's even more interesting is the Dandori battles. And this is where you come up against Mr. Red Hair, or Red Leaves, I should say. And it's actually a battle and it even splits the screen so you can see everything that they're doing as you do it, if you can split your attention like that, which I can't. But it's just Dandori again, so it's trying to get as much stuff into your ship or onion, whatever is, as you can. Uh, within a time limit, but you're fighting against another player, essentially, only it's a CPU. And you know what? That was what made me rethink Ochi, because I've got to be honest, when I first started playing the game, I didn't really like him. <laughs> Now, let me clarify before everyone goes at me in the comments. I like the character design. I thought it was fun, but I did think when I first actually got control of Ochi that he was way, way too overpowered. And it just made everything a little bit too easy. And to be honest, from what I've played so far, the game is reasonably easy. But I am on the first level, so I'm willing to sort of just sort of say, well, maybe, maybe it'll get harder. But like, all the enemies have been quite easy. And like, organizing the Pikmin is really easy now. I don't like the fact that you automatically lock onto everything. Uh, that is something that I'd like to change. I want more free movement. If I want to lock onto something, I'll press a button to do it, okay? But Ochi can do, well, all sorts. Ochi can, well, he can't swim to begin with, actually, which is interesting, because that would be uh, really overpowered. But he can carry things, um, you know, he can uh, fight enemies. He can do most of what a Pikmin can do. Uh, and so much more, basically. He can, um, you know, you can ride him and he can jump, which you can't do because you don't have your moon boots or something. Oh, actually, that might be in the game. Yeah, there's like loads of upgrades and stuff. I, I can't go into like major detail in this, but yeah, you can like upgrade all manner of things. You can upgrade Ochi, you can upgrade yourself. It's, it's good. It's good. You get like this second currency that's just like stuff. Like sort of little crystally bits. But after I'd done a little bit more with Ochi, I realized what he was. He was essentially Louis plus. So you know, yeah, when you you can control Ochi by your you know, sort of by himself, and you can, you know, control Pikmin and stuff like that just in the same way as you can with your main character. <laughs> you can also transport things and dig things up and stuff like that. A little bit more versatile in some areas, but and this was really the clincher where I was just like, okay, I can get on board with Ochi, and that I didn't feel he was completely overpowered. He can't climb. I've just realized you may be able to unlock something to allow him to climb. <laughs> but you have these walls and um, only Pikmin and uh, your character can climb them. Ochi can't. All of a sudden, you're put in a situation, you know, you're going to have situations where you don't have Ochi. And there are some situations where Ochi was like separated from you underground and stuff like that. And it made it more sort of like classic Pikmin. But um, at the same time, yeah, the more I used uh, Ochi in the main sort of like main storyline stuff makes things a little bit too easy. But when it comes to uh, Don, Don I, I want to say Don Burry, when it comes to Dandori, he's absolutely essential to split your um, time effectively. And Pikmin 3, I never got re along with having three captains. It felt overwhelming, but two, Two is the magic number, hence hence the expression. The underground was really good fun as well. Um, it's just it's just like Pikmin 2 in many ways, but generally each like level that you go on is a little bit bigger, but there are fewer levels so far. Like I've been into caves or whatever they're called, and um, they've only had one level. And that's generally only been a few of them. Most of them have had more than one. But it's just interesting that you can have a larger area that feels more substantial overall and less just sort of 
generic, um, all things considered, um, and just having more to do, a little bit more tailored. Um, I like it. I like the fact that you have to, you know, sort of limit the number of Pikmin you go down with, and you can find wild Pikmin down there, and that's where you find the ice Pikmin, which I'll get on to. And it means you have to be arguably a little bit more careful. Right now, everything's an absolute cakewalk, so I think... I think I've lost a grand total, and this is no exaggeration, of two Pikmin in my entire playtime. <laughs> yeah. I really hope it gets harder. But it's good fun. It's nice to be able to go down and uh, it sort of, it stops time just as it did in Pikmin 2. So, well, the game actually says, oh, time travels at one sixth the speed, but I think that's... I think that's story, because they, they also say you can take as much time as you like down there. I think rather than saying time stops and weird things happen, you know, it's just... Uh, explanation. One very minor thing that I was worried about was the fact that I was getting treasures right at the beginning and they weren't coming up with names. I needn't have worried, I just needed to be more patient. All the treasures have names and they're all marvellous. That was always one of my favourite things about Pikmin 3 and Pikmin 2 subsequently because I only recently played Pikmin 2. Don't tell anyone. There's one that I do remember and it was like the lower half of a Russian doll, like a matryoshka doll, and um, the game just called it Empty Vase because without context, it just looks like a vase. And I just, I, I love that way of looking at things like with completely fresh eyes. I mean, obviously it's real people looking at them, like real human people looking at them and coming up with new and inventive ways. But the idea that they're finding these things and they've no idea what they are and they're just like, uh, empty vase. Yeah, it's it's got that shape about it. Yeah, it's probably a vase, you know, just a just a big one. <laughs> just It really tickles me and I'm so pleased that it's back in this game because it adds so much charm and character. And speaking of charm and character, I wasn't initially sold on the idea of the um the the, the the rescue call whatever it is um because i was like oh there's gonna be all these people around and there is a lot of dialogue to begin with it's you know calmed down a little bit now that i'm out of the sort of tutorial type stuff that was a really weird way of saying tutorial but the thing that i really loved about pikmin one was the sense of isolation and the focus on the pikmin and everything and you don't have that in Pikmin 4, but what you do have is a strange sort of sense of community. Like, it's going completely in the opposite direction, and you sort of feel like that you are on, like, a rescue mission. It, it manages to nail that really well, and I enjoyed it far more than I feared I would, so I'm really pleased about that. Although, it does have to be said that it feels like some of the focus is being taken away from the Pikmin themselves. And that is a little bit disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's a combination of the fact that they are more a means to an end with your goal, rather than the actual focus of the game, and the fact that you've got Ochi as well, who can do a lot of what Pikmin do. Admittedly, you still need Pikmin, you still need the numbers, but Ochi is kind of like a super Pikmin. It does, it does feel a little bit like this game is more about the like the the octations the um uh, the copites and all that sort of thing I, I think in fact there are actually some other planets that they reference which is kind of cool and it definitely seems to be expanding the law but it's expanding the law away from pnf 404 it's talking about you know sort of the octations the copites and stuff like that it's not as much a focus on the pikmin which is a little bit of a shame, to be honest. I understand this is the fourth main game in the series. It can't all be about, hey, look at these interesting creatures and discovering this planet. It, it can't be that anymore. But it is a little bit of a shame that the Pikmin are now playing second fiddle to all these, you know, sort of human-like aliens. Well, human-like, you know what I mean? Human... The, the aliens. The, the not Pikmin. I'm hoping there will be a bit more focus put onto them later on. But yeah, right now it does sort of feel like they're a bit of a means to an end. There's not so much curiosity about the Pikmin from the from the other people. They will occasionally, like when you first introduce the Ice Pikmin, they're just like, wow, the, imagine, you know, that something that's frozen solid could move like that. But then it, it sort of rapidly just like, oh, you can freeze enemies and stuff like that. Although that is cool. The, mechanically, it's very cool. It's very cool and very, very fun, but just... I miss the focus being on the Pikmin. But the Ice Pikmin, how do they fare? I really like the Ice Pikmin. They can they can freeze opponents, uh, freeze enemies, monsters, that sort of thing. And that is really, really handy. 
but it does come at a price. You know, sort of you throw a load of ice pigmen, it takes a while for the enemy to freeze. I think it's probably depending on their size. And um, then when they're frozen solid, you can attack them with um, with reckless abandon, but you will shatter them. And that means you don't get an enemy corpse to take to the onion and get more Pikmin out of it. You do get some nectar, which is interesting. So if you're really sort of clamoring for nectar, you can choose to do that. But it does mean that there's a payoff to making enemies even easier to kill, even though they're already really easy. Although the bulb orbs are actually a little bit harder than they were in Pikmin 3, you can no longer stun them by attacking their eyes, which... I liked that notion in Pikmin 3, but it was completely broken, so I'm quite pleased that you can't do that anymore. And um, But you can still stun them if you throw a pick pick Carrot. Yes, you can actually get pick pick Carrots now, and uh, you, you can throw them out. There's loads of other items as well that I can't get into, but the enemies will go after a pick pick Carrot, eat it, and these are the bitter ones. You know, you've, you've specified the bitter ones that aren't really fit for your consumption, and they'll go, ah, and they'll freeze in place, and you can wang a load of Pikmin at them. Mechanically, Pikmin 4 is proving to be really outstanding. I am curious to see if they give um, uh, Blue Pikmin um, more of a use. This is something that has been discussed and I've actually been researching a little bit. Um, uh, Psylocke Hawk did a really interesting video about it. Blue Pikmin are kind of uh, kind of worthless, so I'm kind of curious to see if they do more than with that. I can I can I can see them, but I can't get to them. In the short time that I've had with Pikmin 4, I've really really enjoyed my time. I am a little bit sad about a few very minor things that, you know, make Pikmin, you know, what it is to me and so close to my heart being so different, like the focus seemingly being taken away from the Pikmin themselves, which I think is an odd choice, but what they've replaced it with is at least still fun and interesting and seems to be expanding things, which is, I suppose, better overall. I just want there to be more focus on the little Pikmin. I'm quite keen to see how um, Ochi fits into the rest of the narrative and the rest of the mechanics and everything like that. Um, but from what I've played, this is shaping up to be a really, really flipping good time. I think so far it's potentially maybe creeping up past Pikmin 3 for me, but I don't, I don't think it, anything could ever, like within the Pikmin series, anything could ever exceed Pikmin 1 because there's just this massive blanket of nostalgia over it for me. But e even so, objectively, this is turning out to be a really flipping good game. And um, I had to stop myself to keep from <laughs> constantly playing it in order to record this. And that is... That's the best sign. I'm gagging to go to more areas. I'm gagging to see what else the game has to offer. But from what I've seen, it's pretty flippin' excellent. And there you have it. Those are my early thoughts on Pikmin 4 after having played it for a bit. Are you excited for it? Do you, do you have some comments about something I said? Have I said something really stupid? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you throw four Pikmin at that subscribe button? Is that the best I can do? And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <coughs>